When you think about the most realistic stars that the New York Knicks could trade for, you obviously think of Donovan Mitchell. You think of Joel Embiid. And then you think about CAA clients that the Knicks could potentially target in the offseason. But according to one NBA insider, the most realistic trade target for the New York Knicks, especially during the season, would be Carl Anthony Towns. We're going to look into that report, but we're also going to look into what Julius Randle said because he actually addressed the trade rumors that are surrounding the Knicks right now. We're going to look into this and so much more today. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure notifications are turned on. And now, let's get started. Carl Anthony Towns is apparently more likely than Joel Embiid for the New York Knicks. Now, if you're like me, hearing this type of news has to make you upset because Joel Embiid is the better player. Joel Embiid is the player that you want if you're a New York Knicks fan. If Carl Anthony Towns is on the table and the Knicks are forced to trade for him or go after him, in my opinion, it makes the Knicks a little bit worse because he's a glorified number two at best. And if you trade for him, the Knicks are still one piece away from contending and being that lethal threat in the Eastern Conference. But let's go ahead and break down this report. According to Frank Isola, he stated the following. Carl Anthony Towns seems to be a likelier trade target for the New York Knicks compared to Joel Embiid. Shout out to NBA Central on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call that platform, for reporting the following. When I heard this, when I first saw this, I had to sit on the news for a minute. Because everything, including my gut, is screaming at me, telling me, Troy, you may want Joel Embiid, but you're gonna get Cat. The Knicks are gonna get Cat. And every time my brain tells me that, it hurts. It hurts, guys. It affects me, and not in the good way. I do not want Carl Anthony Towns on this team. I am just as much tired of talking about him as much as you guys are tired of watching me talk about him. Trust me when I say that. But when we have a number of NBA insiders reporting that potentially the Knicks could trade for Carl Anthony Towns, they're looking at Carl Anthony Towns, they're quote-unquote monitoring Carl Anthony Towns, I gotta report on it. And I gotta give you my opinion on it. And in my opinion, this trade would not be the greatest move for the New York Knicks. It puts them a step back because Carl Anthony Towns gets paid like a superstar and performs maybe borderline like a star. And if you're trading for a player like that, giving up assets for a player like that, only to still be a piece away from contending in the Eastern Conference, then why are you making the move? Why are you making a move to now have less assets to go after another star? Make it make sense. It really honestly doesn't. I know what Carl Anthony Towns can do. I know in terms of three-point shooting and big man, he's probably one of the best in the NBA. But that's not all the Knicks need. They also need a big body in the paint that they can rely on to score. They need somebody who's going to bang with other bigs, take contact, and get the and one and score, especially at the five spot. We don't only need a five shooting threes. We need somebody who can take you off the dribble as well. We need somebody who can go ahead and take it inside the paint. And also, somebody who can play in the mid-range just a little bit more. Carl Anthony Towns has the tools to do it, but oftentimes doesn't do it. Because he relies on his three, he doesn't like to take contact, and if you don't want to do that at your size, especially at your strength, it's a waste. It's a waste of his talent. And honestly, if Tom Thibodeau is coaching him, he's going to tell him he's going to want him in the paint more to be guarding other bigs and to take contact. Is Carl Anthony Towns going to want to do that? Is he going to want to do that consistently with the New York Knicks? Because you got to understand, in any cat deal, Mitchell Robinson is likely gone. Because a front court of Mitchell Robinson and Carl Anthony Towns, that doesn't make sense. Putting Mitch on the bench, that probably won't make sense. And Mitch probably wouldn't want to do it. And even Julius Randle, and Carl Anthony Towns, and Mitchell Robinson, let's say, if you want to play that out there, and move Julius to the three. 
that sounds atrocious. I would never want to see that on the floor. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't sell me as a championship contender. And if you're making a trade like that, that's exactly what you'd have to be. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of Cat fans out there. I know a lot of you guys in the comments actually want to trade for Carl Anthony Towns. Okay, great. I hear you guys. Shout out to you. That's not me. That is not me. I am not trading for a guy, another guy, mind you, who doesn't have another gear, who can't turn it up in the playoffs. It cannot be just Jalen Brunson. It needs to be other people. If you're trading for another player, that player needs to be able to contribute in the playoffs as well too. Because if he can't, then you're just trading for a, what, a little bit better Julius Randle? That's what you want to give up more assets for? I'm sorry, not me. Not going to do it. All the respect in the world to Cat and everything that he does and can do. I do not want to see him on the New York Knicks. I don't want to see the Knicks trade for him. And my fear is that the Knicks have all the assets required, especially this year before Carl Anthony Towns starts that super max deal of around 50 million starting. They have all the assets required to get a trade done midseason, especially if the Wolves spiral out of control. And given how the West is structured right now, that could absolutely happen. Julius Randle actually recently spoke out on the recent trade rumors surrounding the New York Knicks. And guys, I gotta say, I love this. This was like a breath of fresh air when I first read it. Because I love when journalists get to the truth, ask the questions that all fans want to know, and tell the players, ask the players, hey listen, this is what's happening. Do you have a comment on it? The worst thing they can tell you is, I can't talk about it, I don't want to talk about it, next question, I'm not going to address it. But at least, at the very least, ask the question. And I'm so happy that journalists are starting to ask this question, including Steve Popper and Steph Bondi of the New York Post. So according to Steve Popper of Newsday, he asked Julius Randle about the Embiid trade rumors and the Knicks being in Star Chase rumors. And this is what Randall had to say. We've been in everyone since I've been here, good or bad. It's always a rumor. And then when he was asked how he learned to deal with it, Randall said, did it come from Leon? And when the reporter said, not from his mouth, Randall stated, okay, that's how I deal with it. Julius Randall was extremely blunt in regards to how he is addressing these trade rumors. Obviously, he hears them. The entire team hears them. But to him, it sounds like it's white noise because he stated as soon as he became a New York Knick, he started hearing all of these trade rumors ever since then. And it's not stopped. So for him, it's no surprise. It's not newsworthy. And it's really nothing different. It's more or less the same. However, what he did note that I thought was very interesting is that it doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter what anybody says the only person trade rumors matter from is if leon rose addresses it or says it because if leon rose doesn't address it if leon rose doesn't say anything about it then julius randall doesn't care he's gonna mind his own business continue moving forward and not care about it in the very least because to him it doesn't matter unless leon rose addresses it or gives his stamp of approval on it. Unless those things happen, they're just rumors, they're just reports, and at the end of the day, they do not matter. And that's how Julius Randle chose to address this, and to be honest, it was very, very real, it was very authentic, and it was clear-cut and straight to the point. The trade rumors, yeah, I hear them, I always hear them, but I don't care. Unless Leon Rose is saying it, it doesn't matter to me. That basically is a summary of what his answer was. Thank you to Steve Popper. Thank you to Steph Bondi for asking these type of questions. Shout out to Randall for even giving a response. Even this type of blunt response, it'll do. I'll take it because something is better than nothing. But guys, let me know in the comments, what do you feel about the trade rumors surrounding the New York Knicks right now? 
Do you feel like we should shut off these trade rumors and just focus on the season right now? Or do you think that when these reports come out, we should look at them, we should react to them, and we should entertain them? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, guys, I would really love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. But of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.